little update. Got the master cylinder off. And uh, not too sure how I'm going to do this. <laughs> Let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, whenever I took it off, this on the bottom was all, uh, well, bottomed out. And it scratched into this, uh, this little piston right here. And uh, I'm going to show you. Um, little makeshift tripod type thing. All right. Um, this is your master cylinder. If you look inside, um, dang. Let me grab a flashlight real quick. Hopefully, you'll be able to see with the with the flashlight. There's a. There's two little holes down at the bottom of that. That's where all your uh, your brake fluid goes in into. And so then you have um, this piston that goes in there. And let's see if you can. I don't think you'll be able to see the uh, the two little holes come out. But anyways, those holes go straight down through there and into this uh, reservoir or this. Uh, I guess piston chamber, <laughs> whatever. Anyways, uh, so this is the piston. Um, as you can see, there's like a flared, uh, kind of an O-ring type thing. Anyways, what happens is um, this piston sits, of course, underneath and inside here. But um, all that fluid gets uh, drained down in behind this uh, this piston right here so there's all this fluid right here so whenever you push on the brake this pushes forward and it pushes all that fluid through that's in there um, you can see it holds it's quite a bit of fluid and so it's pushing all that out through these two uh, brake lines and then of course that goes up to your brake calipers but um so that's kind of a rough and, and dirty how master cylinder works. But anyways, um, <coughs> sorry, um, I had trouble with it. I um, I finished shaving this off, and let's see, you might can see again. Um, I shaved this off, so I'll, I think what I'm going to do is get a um, uh, angle iron and have it attached to the frame and then have that lip sticking up and drill a hole through that anyways uh, so I drilled this out or grinded it off shaved it off and got it a little bit smoother that's basically what I had to do to the bore is um, since it was you know it has to have a perfect fit from you know from these holes from where that is from there back um, actually from probably about right here back um, sorry from about here back needs to be perfect because this uh, if there's any scratches or um, nicks or anything like that all that fluid can squeeze past it then you have a, a brake leak and you're not going to get the, the pressure that you need um, for your brake lines and uh, brake calipers um, so anyways what I did was I I grinded this off. You could kind of see where it had pushed up into the bore. So, uh, like I said, I grinded it out, got it as smooth as I can, um, and then this. Let's see here. This goes in this way, and it'll fit in there. But I got to kind of squeeze it and manipulate it and I'll probably put some some brake fluid on it to help uh, lube it up but anyway so I can push that in there but this spring right here sits in the back of it and then that spring goes on the inside of this like that so whenever uh, it pushes back the spring is going to push it back forward which is going to draw um, more fluid in from your reservoir up here so that's how that works and then there's a once this 
once this is in there about that far you can kind of see this loop which uh, a lot of it got chewed off of because of that but um this uh, snap ring goes inside that to retain your piston anyways so i'm gonna hopefully hopefully that'll f i don't you know i don't know if that's gonna work or not but figure we'll give it a shot if not then um I'll have to buy a whole new one of these and I won't have to do the uh, um, fabricate that that new ear so anyways uh let's see oh I'll show you what I grinded that off with good old Dremel first use this it's pretty rough and then came back with this it's kind of a greenish I don't know what what it is. I wish they kind of. I got all these pieces and parts in here, like this little stone. I don't know what that's really for, unless it's to clean off your, uh, maybe your wheel. Like this would probably need to be clean. Maybe that's what that's for. I don't know. But, uh, anyways, Harbor Freight, I think it was on sale $9.99 for all those. Awesome. Okay. Let's go back out and show you how I wired the, uh, the kill switch up. So of course uh, you've seen that part and then I just used a butt butt connector there. Wind up through here, zip tied it and then it goes up underneath that. Um, I haven't started this in, uh, since the weekend. After after that last video, I uh, I hate those birds. See them things? Oh, those are the ones that come and they're the ones that come and eat eat the dog's food, poop all over the place. Those are one that I'm after. But since it's on the neighbor's roof, I can't do anything about it. Oh, anyways, what was I saying? Oh, since the last video, um. I actually got everything hooked up together and uh, also I tightened the chain. Let's see if it'll, if it'll start. On. Choke. Starts up pretty nice. Like I said, I hadn't started it up in a while. So, uh, anyways, let me show you what uh, what I did with the how I tighten the chain. So you can see, uh, maybe a little bit too tight. But um, all I did was I stuck a piece of plywood in there, um, painted it black, and uh, bolted it all down. She's all good there. Oh, what else can I update you on? I don't really know. I guess uh, it's kind of a standstill. I gotta see if I can finish fixing that uh, uh, master cylinder. And then if that fits, then let's see here. This angle iron right here. I'm gonna have this, of course, underneath the frame, and it'll come up. And I have a little bit bigger stock. Um, I think it's probably two by two or something like that. But it'll probably come up to right here. And then uh, cut it off about here. And drill a hole there. And that ought to work. Hopefully these uh. These calipers aren't frozen up. That'd be another issue. <laughs> and then we can worry about the uh, throttle cable. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.